My name is Edward Sullivan, and I am a professor of the history of modern Latin American and Caribbean art at New York University at the Institute of Fine Arts, and I'm also an independent curator. My memories of, the, of El Museo are very long. I mean, they go back to when I was very young. And I was a student here in New York. I was born here, I grew up here, although my parents sent me to school for some time um, when I was about 11 and 12 in Mexico City. So I had, I had learned Spanish from a very early age and I was continuously fascinated by anything that had to do with Spanish culture, with Latin American culture, and I just couldn't get enough of it. I was also a graduate student in Latin American literature and then I did ultimately an MA and a PhD in art history. Um, El Museo actually was a, bi a big part of my growing up intellectually because in the early 1970s, the very first time I went to El Museo, I uh, really knew very little about the institution, but if I remember correctly, and of course it was a long time ago, and I was, uh, I think I must have been just an, an undergraduate, uh, finishing my undergraduate work or was a graduate student at the very beginning of my career, uh, it was likely to have been the same time as the Art Heritage of Puerto Rico exhibition, which was here at El Museo, of course, and then at the Met. And the first time I went to El Museo, I don't know how I heard about it, but I was always looking for things that had to do with Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. I'd been to Puerto Rico uh, by that time and was fascinated by its old architecture and its art and the history of Puerto Rico. And there was a panel that I heard was being organized at uh, El Museo del Barrio. And the museo was not where it is today, but it was rather in its first large home, which was a, I think, a series of storefronts that had, at least one of them had been a bodega, if I remember correctly, on 3rd Avenue and 106th Street, if that's my proper recollection. And it was a series of talks uh, being given about Puerto Rican artists. And the one that I most was interested in was Arturo Davila, who was a you know, great art historian uh, in Puerto Rico, talking about Jose Campeche and Campeche, uh, the wonderful 18th century uh, Afro-Puerto Rican artist, was in the exhibition of the Art Heritage of Puerto Rico. I was very interested to learn more about those links between Spain and the Caribbean, and that was the beginning of my association with El Museo. And uh, then shortly, well, afterwards, uh, El Museo uh, migrated over here to Fifth Avenue, and I was just a regular um, attendee at uh, exhibitions and at uh, events. And um, I have been trying for this interview to think of all of the many things that I've seen at uh, El Museo that have stimulated my uh, imagination and taught me a great deal about art, not only in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, but throughout Latin America. And uh, I guess as, a, as an academic and as a curator of exhibitions in museums in this country and in Latin America and in Europe, including uh, work that I've done here at El Museo, uh, it's been a principal source of my intellectual development and that of my students because every time I teach something that has to do with an exhibition that's at El Museo, they have to come here, they have to you know, do papers and do interviews with artists if they're living artists. And uh, it's just been a, a place that I have uh, considered very much of a home. To, and also so many of the members of the staff have become very close friends from uh, members of the curatorial staff, of the administrative staff, and so it's just sort of a, um, a very familiar place to me. So I was very happy to have been actually a part of the, the workings, as it were, of El Museo. Over a number of years, I was a member of the Visual Arts Advisory Board, if that's the proper name. I'm not, I don't remember exactly, but anyway, I, I don't know if I was appointed to it by Susana Leval, uh, or by Petra Barreras. And both, interestingly enough, both Petra and Susana were classmates of mine at the Institute of Fine Arts. Uh, Petra was my um, exact class. Uh, Susana, I think, was finishing her degree when I started. And so I know, uh, I knew both of them 
from a very long time, uh, from, well, considerably long time before they became associated with El Museo, and one of them put me on this advisory board. And it was, for many years, a very active board, and I think that we did some very good work. We met quite often, uh, usually in the office of the director, uh, or in a little conference room right near the director's office, up on the third floor. And it was all very informal, but very intense. And everyone who was on that committee, um, including uh, Tony Bishop, who I think was the ex officio being chair of the, uh, of the board, uh, member of the committee, but all the other people worked very hard to, uh, with the director and with the curatorial staff, um, reading proposals for exhibitions and looking at visuals and talking about the, how an individual exhibition would fit within the multiple missions of El Museo. And uh, even mentioning the mission of El Museo was so interesting because I saw it evolve and change and sort of reinvent itself over the uh, over the years. And I felt as if I were being, uh, as if I were a part of that, uh, a part of that um, you know process, that historical process uh, for this institution, which I think has played such a, a key role in the intellectual and artistic life of New York City and the United States. Um, so. We can talk about that later if you want. But uh, I, I've also, um, of course, as I said earlier, I've been both involved with a number of exhibitions uh, from a curatorial point of view or writing essays for the catalogs uh, or as a, simply as a visitor. I, I guess one of the earliest exhibitions that I was actually involved in as writing something was for the Oyer exhibition, which was so long ago, I think it was in 1984. It began in Puerto Rico and then came here, and then it went to Springfield, Massachusetts. And the Francisco Oyer exhibition was a really major uh, show that received a good deal of press in the New York Times and in other public, uh, other so-called, in quotation marks, mainstream press. A lot of people had not been familiar with Oyer. I was quite familiar with Oyer by seeing his work in Puerto Rico. I was intrigued by this artist who traveled, who spent some 20 years in France uh, and was friends with Pizarro and the other members of the Impressionist Circle. And the exhibition, uh, which was organized also by two people who I have been very friendly with, Aide Venegas, who I met, I guess, in San Juan many years ago, uh, who with Marimar Benitez, uh, who continues to be a good friend, and I see her when I go to Puerto Rico. They were, of course, the major curators of the, of the uh, Francisco Oyer, a realist impressionist, and I wrote an essay for the catalog about Oyer and Spain. And so that was in the, in 84, 83, 84. Uh, and I think that that was probably one of the first shows that I was individually involved in, or directly involved in, rather. Uh, and I guess we can cut to something like 2002 or 2003, uh, when I co-curated an exhibition here at El Museo uh, with my partner, whose name is Clayton Kirking, who at that time was, uh, he, he had just come to New York, having been curator of Latin American art at the Phoenix Art Museum. And we did the show uh, for both El Museo and the Katona Museum of Art, which is in Westchester. And it was very interesting that uh, it was called Latin American Still Life, Reminiscences of Time and Place. And it was a, quite a large show that covered the entire uh, main exhibition area of the, uh, in the galleries. Uh, we had artists um, from as long ago as Oyer. There were some very, very sp uh, splendid still life paintings that were lent to us by Mr. and Mrs. Unanue, and they're still in uh, Carmenana Unanue's house uh, in Alpine, New Jersey. Very beautiful uh, still lives of guavas and mame and various other tropical fruits. Uh, we had artists, uh, very contemporary artists. We had Chicano artists. We had artists from Brazil and Uruguay and Argentina and Puerto Rico and Cuba. And so it was a really very stimulating uh, exhibition that Susanna Leval was very interested in having here because we had originally uh, worked uh, w with the curators at Katona, which is in northern Westchester. And I remember coming one day to a meeting of the same visual arts committee that I was a member of, but to present and to a certain extent defend the exhibition because people rightly thought, well, 
it's in Westchester, and Westchester isn't that far, and will the same people not go up there? But I think Susanna was very um, adamant that it would have a different constituency here in Manhattan. Uh, so we did the show here, and it was a great a great pleasure for me to work so directly uh, with the uh, with the staff. Um, another show that I worked on specifically was an exhibition that was its venue was here at Ed Museo. Uh, although the, much of the organization had been done by the New York Historical Society, and that was a show called Nueva York, 1613 to 1945, which is really a, a both an art uh, and a historical exhibition tracing the presence of Spanish and Latin American culture and the personalities from Spain and Latin America from the very first recorded uh, immigrant from the Dominican Republic uh, or from what was then called Hispaniola, uh, to New York in 1613, up until the years of the Second World War. And with it, we did a rather, a, a quite extensive book. It wasn't a catalog, but it was a book of maybe 15 essays that I really had the privilege of um, uh, editing. And I wrote uh, the essay about Latin American and um, Spanish artists in uh, in New York uh, during from the late 19th century up to 1945. Uh, so that was that, uh, and then of course there was the big, huge blowout blast exhibition, Caribbean art at the crossroads of the world, um, which was something actually very close to my heart because I had been asked by Julian Sugasagoitia who was my very dear, is my very dear friend, because Julian and I had worked uh, since the late 90s in, uh, together at the Guggenheim Museum, because I was a chief curator of a show that was at the Guggenheim in 2001 called Brazil Body and Soul. And uh, Julian was the coordinator uh, he was literally the body and soul of that exhibition because we traveled many times to Brazil together. We got to know each other very well. And then he came to uh, El Museo. And um, one of the things that he asked me to do at the very beginning of his tenure here was to write a praise or write a, write a description of what I thought a pan-Caribbean show could be, you know, just as a point of departure, which I did. I wrote maybe 10 or 15 pages. And uh, it, you know, maybe that was used as a template for the ultimate work, I mean, the really heroic work of Deborah, Colin, and Elvis Fuentes, and all the other people who worked on the show. And of course, it was a tripartite exhibition here at El Museo, and at the Studio Museum in Harlem, and at the Queens Museum. And uh, I, uh, I think I was on various panels that uh, I remember one meeting right here on the stage of this theater. Uh, many uh, people who were interested in the Caribbean, art historians, museum professionals, many of them had come from all over the Caribbean to talk about it. So it was a show that uh, I guess the very, very early starting point was this little document that I wrote for Julian. And then it took on a life of its own. And it was a show that, that was very carefully done because it was done over a long period of time and with a great deal of care. Uh, you could say that the show was overwhelming. It was pretty overwhelming because to see it, you had to go to three venues and each of them was packed with art. Uh, but it was very stimulating. It had incredible things. Um, I actually lent some works of art to that exhibition because I have a lot of Caribbean art that I've acquired over the years. And uh, one of the great things about that show was the catalog. And that is something, of course, that will survive. Uh, and long after the, the show itself is sort of fading people's memories. And that catalog has been crucial as a, a, a study tool for my graduate and undergraduate courses on Caribbean art uh, and for courses in general about Latin American art. It was a brilliant catalog because it had uh, excerpts or, or reprintings of classic texts from as long ago as the 17th century, plus many commissioned texts of, uh, of art historians and artists uh, and writers. Uh, who were uh, contributing to this big volume. I wrote a, uh, a, an essay about collecting and exhibitions of Cuban, Haitian, and Puerto Rican art in New York. Um, and it, so it, uh, it was one of the many uh, books that has been produced uh, by El Museo staff that I think uh, really are meaty, weighty, important volumes. I'm thinking of another one that's absolutely uh, critical for anyone interested in uh, in um, 
the information about New York as a center for the coming together of artists from the Caribbean and Latin America, and that is the great catalog called Nexus New York, uh, a show that was also a very big group production, and Deborah Cullen was uh, one of the principal um, movers of that, uh, of that show. So those are some of the things that I uh, either have been involved with or have been very, uh, very, very impressed by. I mean, I can, I can go back in history and think of things in the 80s that I, uh, that I was very uh, impressed with. I'll just, re I'll just mention one uh, that was important for me. There was a, a show that came to El Museo, and it must have been in 84, 85, called Puerto Rican Art Between Past and Present. And it was a show that was curated by Maricarmen Ramirez. And of course, Maricarmen is now a curator of Latin American art at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. When I first met Maricarmen uh, at a panel here at El, at El Museo uh, when she came to talk about her show. And it was the first time that I met uh, a lot of artists uh, who then became friends of mine. I will never forget that it was the first time I met Mirna Baez. And Mirna, who I think is one of the most brilliant artists of Puerto Rico uh, in the 20th and 21st century. I learned a great deal from them, and Mirna Baez was somebody who was particularly interesting, not only talking about her art, but also talking about her position as a Puerto Rican woman. And she is very uh, adamant, of, I mean, she's a very much of a, a figure within the social life of Puerto Rico, and uh, she has been very active in independence uh, movements in Puerto Rico, and she's also been very active as an author. And she was with Martorell, uh, the co uh, the co author of a very important book about Puerto Rican art. And speaking of Martorell, uh, that was another exhibition that was probably in the late '90s. Uh, I sometimes conflate these uh, the the exhibition dates, but Martorell did a huge installation uh, of. Uh, of his work uh, that really transformed the uh, halls, the uh, galleries of El Museo uh, into his own sort of passionate, uh, romantic world uh, that is informed by his memories of his childhood, of his mother, of growing up uh, in a very traditional Puerto Rican household. And the exhibition, uh, which was a one artist show of Antonio Martorell, um, who, like Mirna, is also a very important writer and a very important, I think, social artistic activist in Puerto Rico. Uh, so um, El Museo has, now that I think of it, a very interesting intersection with artists, not only Puerto Rican, but principally Puerto Rican who are uh, artists but also social activists. And uh, I think one of the more recent shows that I very much admired, which was done uh, by my friend and colleague and actually former student, Yasmin Ramirez, uh, of The Young Lords, um, which was a really brilliant show, a documentary show of uh, The Young Lords and the importance they had in, uh, in the 1970s in terms of activism and in terms of uh, social welfare for people of El Barrio. Uh, was a, I think, a wonderful combination of art, because it certainly had many artifacts as well as works of art by uh, posters and various graphic works of uh, artists who were associated with the movement, uh, as well as uh, contemporary art by people like Miguel Luciano, uh, who has also been very active over the years at, uh, at El Museo. Um, so I think that's a very important point that should be underlined, uh, the significance of El Museo serving as a venue uh, for uh, social consciousness raising and activism uh, in both a, an intellectual but also in, uh, in a political way. And I think that that, is, uh, that serves a huge purpose and it serves to educate people uh, about the social realities of things, uh, about, uh, about Latin Americans, about Puerto Ricans, about, uh, about uh, the diaspora, uh, because after all, it is a museum that was founded in a diasporic setting. 
And that is something that should never be uh, lost or should never be forgotten because its history, its early history, even before I was at all associated with it, uh, with Marta Vega and uh, all the other people, uh, the artists uh, who were so critical for forming El Museo in its first series of um, classrooms, uh, they were all, of course, all members of the Puerto Rican diaspora uh, and ultimately the uh, museum became a, uh, a mixing place for people of many diasporic uh, backgrounds, be they uh, Spanish-speaking or French-speaking. There there's a representation, a very important representation of Haitian art here at El Museo. Uh, and its uh, focus on the Caribbean, I think, has been uh, a very important one. That's why I think the exhibition, the Caribbean Art at the Crossroads of the World, was in a way a culmination of many of the efforts that uh, El Museo had made over the years to uh, focus attention on the importance not only of Caribbean culture in the region, but of Caribbean culture in New York City and in the United States, uh, and even further afield, taking into account what uh, the meanings of diasporas are. I mean, the Haitian diaspora in Paris, or in Montreal, or Quebec, or Brooklyn, or of course the Puerto Rican diaspora in New York, or in Hartford, or in any other places, uh, the Cuban diaspora in New York, and in Jersey City, and in Miami. These are all part of the things that El Museo has been um, focusing on paying attention to. And another thing that I, I really want to say, um, although it's not a specific answer to any question you asked me, uh, but I think that the importance and the relevance, let's say more than importance, the relevance of El Museo continues to evolve. And the fact that we are living right now in 2017 in a very precarious moment in terms of people of Hispanic origin in the United States. Every single morning you hear more about raids of ICE on schools and in hospitals and in uh, courtrooms of people who are being deported and you know, all the other things that we're hearing from our officials. Uh, puts El Museo in a very different light than it was at this time last year. And you know, you could go back in history over the past 40 some odd years of El Museo's existence, and I think it's really a true fact that El Museo has responded in one way or another, principally through art, but also through its programming to the social realities of what uh, Latin American and Caribbean people, both at home and in the diaspora, are facing, and how to interpret that for much wider audiences. And the idea of the audiences growing, uh, certainly that's a, another very important and very interesting fact about the history of El Museo, because of course it did begin as a museum which would, if, I don't know if, if records were taken you know, in the 70s or 80s of, you know, who came from which zip code and you know what ethnicity the visitors were, uh, but probably you would find early on there were more uh, visitors uh, from the Puerto Rican community. But now, you know, the the museum has done shows, you know, big shows, shows of. 2,000 years of Latin American portraits, for example, uh, or the, the big mega exhibition of the Gelman collection with the Frida and Diego uh, Rivera, Frida Kahlo paintings that attracted people who were standing in line for two and three hours. And uh, so the museum has had so many changes and shifts in its constituency that that is also a very intriguing part of, uh, of its history. I do. I, I, uh, I would like not only to talk, talk about contemporary shows uh, uh, that belong to one specific, uh, one specific series, but rather the importance that uh, contemporary art has played within El Museo. Um, in no particular order, uh, you could look at the S-Files. The S-Files was uh, a series of shows um, important, like Contemporánea uh, has been, uh, as uh, we also have seen so many individual shows of contemporary artists. I remember the first time I met Carmen Herrera was in her show uh, here at El Museo uh, in, if I'm not mistaken, 1994, of her black and white paintings. Uh, and of course, this artist um, still very much with us at 100 and 
two hundred and something like that, who had a big show at the Whitney only uh, very recently, uh, had a major exhibition here uh, in 1994, one of her first big shows in the United States, or one of her first big shows, period, um, of a contemporary artist, uh, an aged contemporary artist, to be sure, but uh, she was, that, you know, that was a launching pad for, uh, for her, just as, say, the uh, Contemporanea or the S-Files was literally a launching pad for so many artists uh, who um, principally came from the New York area or uh, other parts of, uh, of the U.S. And uh, those uh, curators who worked on it, Procio uh, and Debra, um, and before that, uh, Fatima Bercht, when she was working here, she uh, paid very close attention as well to uh, contemporary art, and she did some very interesting Brazilian shows uh, of not only of contemporary art, but also another thing that we haven't talked about, which I think is very important, uh, the significance of popular arts, or arte popular, as it's called in Mexico, or folk art, all these are terms that are particularly not sufficient, but uh, I'm, I'm very, very adamant about the importance of folk art or popular arts within the realm of contemporary art, because artists who are making Santos in Puerto Rico, who are making uh, ex votos in Brazil, who are making voodoo flags in Haiti, they're all contemporary artists. They're living, they're, they're working in their workshops in Port-au-Prince or uh, in San Juan or in San Germán right now, and they are contemporary artists. And I think El Museo has, has done some very, very interesting uh, exhibitions of popular arts, uh, not as artifacts or not as folkloric images, but rather as the extension of and the wider, wider manifestation uh, of, uh, of contemporary art. And I think that's immensely important uh, when looking at the large panorama of what Caribbean and Latin American art is.